Hello everyone, this is Miner Bob, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Guild Wars 2. Today we're going to pick right back up where we left off, after we went to Heart of the Mist. Uh, okay, here's a obsolete scrap to heal. Let's see, we've got in, into a new mission area, assist researcher Callie with Incom Scrap Heap. Uh, so I need to speak with Callie. Let's go over to him. Do you require my assistance? So, do I want to help? Of course. Okay, so he's going to give us a proto golem that we control. He's going to pick up some of the stuff for us. Nothing I should know. So you can see that he's with me because he's blue. I uh, got a blue label, rather. So let's go ahead and. Pick up another obsolete scrap. And if you look in the upper right hand corner of the taskbar, you'll notice that it flashes and I get a little more to the bar. Uh, electrical distortions will give us some renown also. Might as well collect them all. Whoop! Hey, sometimes it produces something out of chaos. You can see that this rifle is doing a bit more damage than the pistols were. Let's repair that one. Keep moving into the back. Two thirds of the way there. Three quarters, rather. Just a couple more things and we should be done. And there we go. Got local hero, 10 hearts completed, and we've got this particular task. That's five achievement points for local hero. The more achievement points you get, uh, which you get by performing achievements in your hero panel, the more of those achievement points you get, the higher the benefits to your account. You start getting rewards. And you get things like increased magic find, increased gold. So your character just kind of gets luckier. Hmm. So I got a lot of bleed on this rifle. But I don't think I... Well. question is, do I want those boots or not? Nope. Put that in our bank. Okay, on to the next task. You'll notice that this golem is following me, but he'll stop after a while. Let's head to that point of interest and the point of interest up the hill, and followed by another renowned task. Yeah, when we reach the boundary, he'll collapse. Poor guy. Up oh, there he goes. Oh well, couldn't keep him forever. Be cool if we did. Especially if you could fight for us. Which can actually happen as a Sora later. Notice that I'm underwater. I now have a different skill set. Uh, because that's for my harpoon gun. Or spear gun actually. I get uh, the skill at uh, number 2 slot at level 8. So you're... Underwater skills don't progress as fast as your above water skills. Oh, here's a little test. This is uh, teaching you how to dodge. You press V. Notice the arrow that it's pointing to. Has, you have two dodges before you run out of endurance. Endurance will slowly uh, regenerate. You get a chest as a reward. And now we have to dodge roll out. Mighty studded boots. Uh, worse than I have. There we go. There's a merchant. Embrace simplicity. Uh, hmm. Well, let me talk to him. Interesting. Oh well, let's go back and get that renowned heart. Yeah. 
So this one coming up, we just entered the area, obtain a colored key card from Taka, then chromatize flowers with observation turrets and defeat the uses. Now you don't have to get it from just Taka. Some of the assistants that are wandering around can also give you a key card. But you can see that some are red, some are blue, some are yellow, some are green. You have to get the appropriate card My for the appropriate um, turret. Uh, that's not the assistant to get it from. Uh, let's go squish a news. Poke it. They always uh, turn hostile, so you have to kill them. Lacking endurance. Try to do too many dodge rolls there. So basically, our rifle has three skills. The number one is hip shot, your basic auto attack shot. The second skill is a net, which temporarily immobilizes your opponent. Note that immobilizing them does not stop them from attacking. It just simply doesn't allow them to move. If they have a ranged weapon, it doesn't do as much good. But if they're melee, immobilizing them, then dodge rolling backwards means they can't hit you. So a great way to pin somebody in place. Also, if you have an attack that takes a little while to get going, immobilizing them first almost uh, guarantees that you can get them. Embrace simplicity. Okay, so here's one. Give me a green card. There's a green turret. There, we just activate it. Pops up an ooze. Oh, flaming ooze. There's another green one. Usually you can only use the card twice before you have to go get a new one. So the third attack is called Blunderbuss. The closer you are to the enemy, the more damage it does. It also does bleed. And so the closer you are, the more it bleeds. Uh, or I should say the longer it bleeds. So it causes more condition damage. Let's poke the ooze. Ah, somebody came in and helped. Yeah, I got some there. I saw 11 XP. As you can see, I waited too long. The card was no longer active, so I got to go find another green card. Peacemaker officers do not have the cards. Let's poke some more ooze. We just need a little more. There we go. How may I assist you? And I accidentally took a card, not realizing I had gotten the heart. So it won't let me click anything anymore. Because, dummy, you've already completed the task. So a lot of these tasks will turn off once you complete them, so you can't accidentally click on things you don't need to. So let's go up there to Taka and see what we Hi, can get. How are you? What are you selling? A jar of ooze. Hmm. Oh, let's sell our junk. We don't need the boots, but I might be able to tear them down. See, Jarvis is three vitality instead of three condition damage. So vitality adds to my health. I'd like to have a little more health just to be a little safer rather than inflicting a little more damage. Ah, it's a higher level. I'll still buy them. As soon as I hit level five, I'll, I'll get it. You can see... The yellow bar at the bottom of the screen is how many experience you have. So I'm really close to level 5. Might as well buy it now. I bought another rifle. And hmm, this is a better pair of boots. I'll buy those too. So when I get to level 5, I'll be able to sell off a lot of things. I mean, not sell them off. But I'll be able to wear a lot of things. And then I'll probably salvage those others. Okay, so that's all the good stuff. Hmm, I can get rid of the old boots. So what it did is it turned it into three rawhide leather squares. Excelsior. 
Embrace simplicity. Hmm, I'm having problems clicking on that stupid thing. So, I don't want to sell them. I want to put them in my bank. There we go. Okay, so we have another renowned heart down there, past that merchant that we couldn't get. What I did there was I used my alt key or option key to click on the map and set a personal waypoint. And you can see that it shows up in the mini map in the lower right hand corner. It's a good way to help you figure out where you want to go next. You can see over on the mini map that triangle that is a piece of ore. So we could mine a piece of ore if we could figure out how we get to it and we had our mining tool, which we do. We bought one. <laughs> so, you can see that when I flash over the be heart on the mini-map, it shows that it's actually level 5. So we're starting to attack something that's a higher level than us. You can see the little number 5 by the enemy, the letters in red. That shows he's a 5th level. We're still 4th level, so we're actually fighting up level. These uh, lush kelp beds... These are one of the things that we want. You can see in the upper right hand corner of the task we're working on. Again, there's the level five in red showing that we're working on a task above our level. But it says help bloop. And we want to bring bloop lush kelp, defeat inquest, neutralize poison, and defeat crazed hylix. So we turned in some of those. Ooh, there's an ampule. And there's an inquest to exterminate. You see all little numbers flying off of them. Okay, to the right here is a hero challenge. Now, it's not letting me do this. Uh, I'm only level 4, and you really don't get the skill challenges until level 11. However, if somebody else who is the appropriate level triggers the skill point for you, then you can fight in that and earn the skill point so you just don't have the ability to trigger the skill point until uh, level 11. we're going to see that a little later oh, we've got a level level five and i'm going to go check to see what i have oh i can start equipping now Is. Oops, somebody's attacking me. That's why it wouldn't let me uh, change it. Because you can't change gear out when you're in combat. Alright, you guys are getting annoying. Especially with my inventory window open. I'm nigh invincible. Get some distance between them because he's melee. You can usually tell by looking at what they have. In that case, I had two, or my opponent had two knives. Let's go equip that jar of ooze. So now I have better stats, better vitality. I also have a lot of junk in my inventory. Notice I cannot tear them down. They were bought with karma. Let's see. Where do I want to go? Oh, there's an enemy. Let's go pick up some more lush kelp after this. So the rifle's interesting because on one hand you want to get close for your blunderboss shot, but on the other hand you want to get out of range if they're melee oriented. Ah. So what I usually do is I'll fire a shot, a hip shot, that's the number one skill. 
I'll zap them with number two, the net, so that I can get in closer and they won't move. And then number three, I'll do a point blank shot with Blunderbuss. I'll usually dodge roll backwards to get away from them, especially if they're melee. And then start shooting with the hip shot number one again until my other skills come off cooldown. My new invention will revolutionize There we the go, industry. enough kelp. Got me the heart. See what he has to sell. <sighs> Another bag. Just what I don't need. That's four slots. He's selling five. So, uh, I got rid of that. We can sell those pieces because I can't tear them down. Notice that I could not sell the two blue accessories. Vendors won't usually buy them. Nope, sure enough. Level 5 does not allow me to trigger it. Oh well. Script brain idiot. So now I need to go find something new to do. Nope, looks like I got someone behind me chasing me. There's a point of interest. It looks like we have a waypoint up ahead. Notice those purple diamonds at the top of the mini-map? Those are commanders, people who have spent uh, 300 gold in order to be able to show those commander tags. Okay, moving right along. Let's go up the hill and get that waypoint. No enemies up there. Don't see any red. So let's see what we need next. There's a waypoint up there. There's a scout. You can also go to Soar and Draw. So, just use a simple waypoint that we'd already discovered so that we can get to the next part of the adventure, which is up where that scout is. You can see, again, the glowing halo around the telescope. So, you can see that Peacemaker Officer was level 6. So I'm still heading into areas that are above my level. Generally speaking, that's not too much of a problem. The marsh Although north of Soren Dry is remarkably tumultuous. Senior researcher Shun and level his six. salvage crew clash with the inquest as they race to unearth an artifact Seven. of the old Gollum Foundry site. Across the river from the old Gollum Foundry, the Brill Alliance crew has begun researching Skrit, who make for troublesome, uncooperative test subjects. These crews can always use extra hands. So, going up one level isn't that bad. Level two, two levels above gets to be a little harder. Uh, ooh, there's some copper ore. Let's go ahead and mine that. So you notice that the icon changes and the F key allows you to, to mine. And we're getting copper ore out of it. Usually you get three swings and you'll get one of each sometimes you'll get a rare item in addition it's free money I mean yeah you have to buy the tools but it's pretty much free money so level six reward find and disrupt the nearby inquest lab collect data crystals and question suspicious salvage specialists so here's the door in we've got another player who's going in so this is a good time to go in so you just basically shoot down the door. Come on, there we go. Join in. Mark one golem. Dodge past him. Shoot him up. Collect some loot. Just gonna go ahead and turn off the danger signs. You'll notice that's ticking off on the uh, task for the renowned heart also 
pick up some copper, and then we'll head into the main room. Another danger sign to turn off. Yeah, you can see the data crystals lined up on both sides of the room. Let's take out a few enemy here. They'll just be picked up on the right hand side. You'll see above your mini map how uh, they're going into your inventory. And we'll be turning those into the uh, renowned heart taskmaster. So we want to basically collect up as many as we can. Here's a, another hero challenge. Again, I can't trigger it. Um, but if somebody else does, come on, somebody else, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can shoot up the lab table. Ah, let's see if this guy can trigger it. Even though he's not a level 11, the fact that he has someone in his account, a character in his account that's level 11, they can trigger it. So it's an accountability. So I got a skill point. Even though I couldn't trigger it, the other player character could. I could join in and we both get the skill point. Let's go ahead and take care. Ooh, we have a veteran Mark II Gollum, basically a champion type fight. So he's a necromancer and all those green little uh, globes coming off are basically stealing life force. So that's a different type of character. A necromancer. Go finish up this, getting more data crystals while we're here. Blow up the lab tables. Make sure nobody's around me. So part of this is blowing up their labs part of disrupting the inquest lab. Yeah, it looks like I'm doing about 40 hits, points of damage each time. Hopefully, hopefully, getting these last data crystals here will give me enough to finish the heart off. If not, there will be some things outside to do. So we exit the lab through the rear entrance. That way we don't have to fight our way all the way back. I'll test it out back at the old Gollum Foundry. Okay. Right around the right hand side. We can get back to the task area while picking up the waypoint. So suspicious salvage specialists. You can see them every so often. Those are the ones we're going to be questioning if we don't have enough Excelsior. Um, data crystals to give and to earn this point, this renowned task. Wow, got lots of goodies. Ten of those. This is not for my profession. That requires level six. Okay, so we can get rid of that and that because they weren't for my profession. Notice it gives me luck. Those will uh, eventually give me increased magic find. And magic find essentially gives you a better be chance for way. better gear uh, whenever it's a, a loot drop. So you can either get money and sell it or, or you can salvage it get mater crafting materials and luck. Let's talk to senior researcher. There's the data crystals. Oh man, 10 didn't give me the heart? Wow. 
That's tough. I guess I'm gonna have to go slap around some suspicious uh, salvage specialists. Well, let's get the copper first. Pure money, pure experience. I'm a genius. Some more copper. I knew I'd achieve this. Ooh, we got hunter gather, ten successful gatherings, a new achievement point. Plus, I got a level. Uh, select my reward. So, a better rifle. Marginally better. Oh, I have healing power. Or a shield. Yeah, I'm going to take that better rifle. Thank you very much. Okay. Level 10 is the next reward. Oh, see how I got a tiger's eye pebble from uh, doing the mining? Sometimes you get a really rare item. So basically, each one of these accessories has a slot. And you can double click the gem and you can put it onto that accessory. And what it does is now it's three vitality and three precision. And there's my increased precision. I now have 13% chance of critical. Cannot salvage that old gun. I believe I got that as part of a heart. That's really not much better. 28 defense, but still plus 5 power. And I can't do that one. Salvage that either. So I'm getting quite a collection of stuff that needs to be salvaged. Let's finish off this heart. There's a suspicious salvage specialist. Let's go question him. You're you too eager to get rid of that. Genius. Ah! Inquest. Inquest Saboteur. Ooh, a little bit of lag there. Got some loot. Let's find another suspicious one. There they are. Hiding in the corner. You think you can match my power? Oh, wow. He took care of him. Got the heart. And 20 karma, 60 coppers. Can I climb up this way? That looks pretty steep. Ugh. I love the surrounds, man. They're floppy ears while they run. I think it's so hilarious. Okay. Let's see what he has to offer. Always be loyal to your crew. Antique Golem Head. Oh, let's sell the junk. I can sell that. I couldn't. Plus four healing power. No thanks. Can't use longbows. Inquest Golem Arm. Double click to gain the severed Golem Arm, which can be detonated. Hmm. That is Sounds all. novel, but it's hard to use weapons that are in your inventory and aren't put on your skill bar. So there's our next one. It's level 7. Ah, notice there's a mentor running around. So I'm halfway through level six. So let's kill a few things first, and maybe we'll get closer to seven. There's a raptor. Okay, so that last one was uh, overcharged shot. It's my number four skill. I have a number four skill with a rifle now, and what it does is it knocks back the enemy quite a bit, but it knocks you back a little too. So, now, our routine is, we take hip shots as they come, we can uh, throw the net at them to slow them down, and then when they really get right up on us, we hit them with the blunderbuss to get that high damage, and then finally we use our number four skill for overcharged shot, it'll knock them back, 
knock us back a little bit too, but the effect is worse on them than it is on us. And then we can start with a hip shot again and start the, the rotation over. Some herb seedlings here to harvest. So let's do so. Oops, skelp. See how it knocked him back? Basically stuns him a little bit. So we can loot that. And we get more than one harvest off of this herb seedling. Hmm. Uh, we still don't have many things. Ah, here's a tree that we can log. What is that up in the corner? It says warning. Well, my goodness. There doesn't seem to be anything there on the map. But there's clearly a warning sign. Time to explore. How do we get up there? Oh, yeah. A warning sign. Can't click on it. Oh, yeah, we can. Huh. I've never seen this. I've never seen these signs before with any other character. Uh, no hidden cave there. Let's keep going. Follow the warning signs. You can see I like to scroll in and scroll out, zoom in. Uh huh. Cave. on the verge of a breakthrough. Sniff. Snurriff. Yeah, there were five warning constructs on the way to this cave. What kind of experiments are you running here? Only the most dangerous and unstable. I obviously can't perform them in your presence. It would be extremely hazardous to your health. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pretend I'm not here and keep going. I don't... This is a funny conversation. You're like my mother. <laughs> you never know when you're not wanted. Sit with rabbits? Uh, I thought you were experimenting on them. <laughs> you want to know the truth? She likes rabbits. I'm not experimenting on them. I get strange looks from my colleagues, so I come here to feed and care for them. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Pretty neat. But there's absolutely nothing back here than a little side story. <laughs> Which is cute. <laughs> Alright. So, I actually discovered something with this character that no other character I've had has ever discovered. I never noticed it because... Probably because I never went after chopping that tree. <laughs> okay. Whoa, darn skelk. And you can see the numbers just rolling off him. Wait until I get my number five skill. Now let's see if we can squeak right between these two. I I tend to do that. I tend not to just kill everything right, you know, in front of me just for the heck of it. Ah, we have a new little townish type thing that we can go to. Skirt up the side here and get past them. See the icons? We have a helmet, a sword, and a broken heart. The helmet is an uh, arms armor seller. The sword is a weaponsmith's 
bender and the broken heart is an anvil uh, to fix your armor if you die essentially hmm well I think we're just gonna stay here thanks for joining me and as always questions and comments are always appreciated this is minor Bob signing off <laughs>